Hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dancefish.com, where we're on a mission to humanely source, maintain, and transport aquarium fish to our customers. Today, I have a tour. I'm going to show you a bunch of new fish that are available right now at dancefish.com. This is so that it's kind of like a what you see is what you get thing. So if you're looking at a fish on our website, you get an idea of what it actually looks like. So it's it's the next best thing to be here locally and browsing through the store. But before I show you the new stuff, these super red Crabinzas were looking really nice today. So I'm going to start there. I wasn't planning on taking a, a video of these, so I didn't scrub the algae or anything, but they're just looking, they look great. I love this fish. Just as easy as your normal common pelvic acromis uh, pulcher, but this is the red form. Been bred for a long time for this super red coloration. Look at the red on that one that just came up to the front. You. Look at all that. Anyway, they're called Super Red, and I think it's accurate. I literally just saw them uh, as I was grabbing the camera to take the video, and I was like, those look too good not to share. So now let's get to the fish that are newly available. Well, since we started with some cichlids, let's just keep on the theme. Here's a really neat cichlid. This is a Trophius. These are the yellow banded Trophius from E. coli. That's the collection location. They're little right now, inch and a quarter to an inch and a half, I would say. So they haven't developed their adult coloration yet, but they're going to be a pretty much black fish, a dark fish with a bright yellow band down the center. And they're doing fantastic. They're chewing right now on a uh, catfish scratcher from Extreme Aquatics. That's what the food is down there. And look at that group. Look at them go. Now, something about Trophius is they are vegetarians. Oh, look at this one. It's starting to get a little yellow already. I can see a little yellow on that one. That's awesome. At an inch and a quarter, beautiful. Anyways, these are, uh, Trophius are, are vegetarians. They cruise rocks and scrape algae and biofilm and stuff like that off the rocks. So high vegetation diet. These are famous for bloating. So if you feed too much protein and fat, they'll bloat out on you. So give them veggies. We give these guys zucchini, we give them spirulina flakes, and we give them the occasional algae wafer like this catfish scratcher down here. And that way they'll be fine. And don't overfeed them. So as long as you don't feed, as long as you feed a vegetable based diet and don't overfeed, they should do well for you. You're going to want a group. If you get Trophius, you want a group. And that's because if you don't, you're going to have aggression issues. This is a fish that you need to keep in big groups. I don't know of any Trophius keeper that's been successful keeping anything other than good sized groups of Trophius together. So that does mean it's going to be a pretty specialized tank, right? It's probably only going to have Trophius in it, maybe a few other things, but probably only Trophius. And it's not going to be cheap because Trophius are not cheap, but those are some of the prettiest tanks out there, those kind of specialized Trophius aquariums. It's a, it's a beautiful fish. When you get a big group together, I think it's worth it. So anyway, I don't show a lot of cichlids a lot of the time, but I like Tanganyikans, and Trophius are just a specialized Tanganyikan. They're super cool. Anyway, these are the uh, yellow banded Trophius from E. coli. Okay, here's another species or location of Trophius. Uh, these are the red banded ones from Bemba. So where the other ones will have a yellow band, these will be kind of similar, but with a red band. Again, batch is doing great. I'd say same size, about an inch and a quarter. Smallest one's an inch. Smallest one's about an inch. Biggest one is inch and a quarter. I just love watching groups of these. And I don't know if you've ever seen an adult one, but do yourself a favor, Google some pictures of Trophius. And uh, they're, they're so unique, that, that big saddle across the side. Anyway, like the other one, all Trophius species are uh, algae eaters. So veggie heavy foods, don't feed too much and uh, you'll avoid bloat. Okay, I'm on my way to show you another Trophius tank, but I just had to stop here. Look at these blind cave tetras. This is, I don't think I've shown her before. See that big one right there? That is a fish that we affectionately call beluga. She is a massive, I believe, female. Uh, she's always got a, a big group of males following her around wanting to spawn. She is, that is like a three inch fish. Biggest blind cave tetra I've ever seen. Oh, she's looking for the food. It's over here, buddy. Stop circling. There you go. No, she's just like wider circles. <laughs> Circle harder. <laughs> That's her solution. <laughs> anyway, I don't think she's hurting for the food. I mean, look at her. So we'll move on to the other Trophius tank, but there's two more Trophius tanks to show you, and then we'll get to some other stuff. But I just had to stop because look at that. Look at that chunky monkey. All right, this tank of Trophius is the Red Morai. 
They're already getting a little bit of orange, kind of red in the dorsal fin. This batch, I would say, is about the same size. Smallest one an inch, biggest one inch and a quarter, or somewhere around there. And they're doing, they're doing great. All trophies come from Lake Tanganyika. They're a super specialized fish, so they're, they're kind of cool. They're just different from anything else you'll find out there. These are the Bulu Point Trophius. They look quite different than a lot of your Trophius. They're sometimes called cherry spot Bulus because instead of one broad band across the body, these are going to develop two big blotch bands, basically. Two big blotches or two big bands. Um, one kind of in the center of the body and one on the back half of the body. They look really neat. It's like a, a dark fish with these two big bright red spots on them. And uh, not little spots, like big, like kind of blotches. Sometimes they coerce into an entire band, but really neat, really kind of different form of Trophius. And I don't think, yeah, I, we haven't lost a single fish out of this tank. This tank has been rock solid. Um, and they're cute, they're neat as babies, but as adults, their color is gonna blow you away. They're a really neat fish. Okay, so that's enough with some Trophius, I, you know, a few distinct varieties that I think are going to do well for you. Uh, let's look at some gobies. Let's look at some lied bears and some other stuff as well. So breaking out of cichlids. I lied. I've got to show you one more cichlid. This is Geophagus sphenae. They're about two inches, maybe two and a half on the biggest one. The thing about geophagus is they don't really get their color till they have, you know, another inch or two on them. But you can see the potential. It's just starting to come in. Now, this batch is doing great. Yeah, one DOA when they first came in. And uh, since then, rock solid. Really good batch, doing fantastic, showing a little color. Geophagus are an amazing cichlid. They're not vicious. Now, they're cichlids, so they at spawning time and things, you know, they can get a little temperamental. But as cichlids go, geophagus are, are dead peaceful. You can keep them in community tanks with, with lots of other different species of fish. Their mouth structure, they will eat tiny, tiny fish, but they, they won't eat fish unless they're really small. Like their mouth is not structured to go grab fish. So they're not a, a predator in that sense. They'll go around in the sand and they scoop it up in their mouth and they sift it through their gill rakers and expel it out their gills. Get decent size, but not massive and are absolutely gorgeous and peaceful. And they keep your substrate beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Now I have a disclaimer have to make with geophagus. Until they're big, we don't know exactly what they are. These were sold to me as sveni. I think they're sveni. We won't know that though until they get bigger. So purchase at your own risk, but they're going to be beautiful no matter what they are. And we think that they're sveni because that's what the supplier sold them to us as. However, I have had suppliers in the past that sold me sveni and they grew up and it's like, yeah, these are wine miller <laughs> you know, so that kind of thing can happen. Last look at the group of puffers we nurse back to health. I think all of these are probably sold now or close to it, so we're probably not going to get another opportunity. But this is what a few months of tender love and care does to emaciated puffers that arrive in bad shape. Look at these fat little piggies. Fat and sassy. This is exactly what we want. And I love it. They're swimming around. Their tails aren't clamped. They just look good. So for those that have been following, I uh, just wanted to take one last look at these uh, before they go to their forever homes. There might be one or two left, but I don't know if we'll get another chance to film them. There's nothing more satisfying. Well, it's very sad when fish come in in that shape. You never want to have to nurse them back to health. But when you do and you see this result, it's pretty satisfying. So glad they're doing so well. I think they're going to make someone very happy. Okay, next fish. All right, this is a group of blue neon gobies or neon blue gobies. I never know which way it is. They're doing great. No issues with this batch. And these are slightly more expensive than usual just because they came in much bigger than usual. So these are a larger fish. And when fish come in bigger, you know, our supplier charges us more for that. So they are a little more than usual, but they're in amazing shape and they're already big and, and quite colorful. So this group's doing well. And then we have another tank of them over here. So blue neon gobies, if you're looking Looking for some some color and some neat personality in your tank it's hard to go wrong with a blue neon goby they're a fantastic little fish always delightful fun antics little clowns and really pretty to boot okay next we're gonna look at a shrimp this is a wild type shrimp this is the green leaf shrimp so I don't know much about these guys other than they eat like pigs look at them and one thing about them is we had some plecos in here with them and they did harass the plecos now that's probably because we have like 300 of them in here, and there were only a few plecos. Plecos don't move, so they're just sitting still and shrimp are crawling all over them, but they did harass the plecos a bit. So something to keep in mind, I don't think that they would hunt like midwater fish or anything like that. I think 
It's just you got some plecos are sitting still, and so the shrimp are like, hey, what are you? And they go bug the, the pleco. But we did have to separate those plecos out. So just want to let you know that, but we got 300 of these in and 12 arrived DOA. We haven't had any other issues since. So super hardy, kind of big like in a mono shrimp, I have a different pattern, some tiger striping across the back. I haven't seen a whole lot of green. They're called green leaf shrimp. I, I didn't name them. They've kind of got that stripe down the back with some green highlights, I guess. But I also see some with yellow highlights and some with red highlights. So I'm not sure where the name green leaf shrimp comes from. I'm not sure how accurate that name is, to tell you the truth. I bet if someone was enterprising and wanted to make like a beautiful colored, kind of larger, uh, more hardy and voracious algae eating kind of shrimp, I bet they could breed these in a different color more. But anyway, green leaf shrimp, a neat wild type shrimp, my first time with them and uh, seem to be doing fantastic. All right, here's some uh, gimpy gold rose line barbs. But what I really want to show you in here are these rainbow fish. So these are Cali Lumpur rainbows. These are babies that we bred and raised right here at Dan's Fish. They're about an inch to an inch and a quarter long now. No color yet at that size, but aquarium bred and raised right here. I think they're going to be as hardy a rainbow as you can get. And the parents, when they color in, are, are very nice rainbows. So just want to show you this little breeding project. Some neat Cali Lumpur rainbow fish. And by the way, if you like um, gimpy fish and you like gold rose line barbs, basically throughout the last, I don't know, year, Year, as we've got any in that had eye issues, we've put them in this tank. So this is a tank full of blind, or at least, you know, severely limited vision, gold roseline barbs, still healthy, still doing well um, in a tank where they can get plenty of food. They're not out competed in here or anything. And I think they're like, I don't know, like half the price of a normal gold, gold roseline. So if, if you don't mind gimpy fish and you have a tank where these wouldn't be out competed, it's a chance to get a neat fish at a, at a very, very good price. These are expensive fish. And, and if you don't, we have a lot of gold roselines that also have uh, normal eyes. So, you know, both options, but a small percentage of gold roseline barbs, it seems, have eye issues and we just kind of collect them over time and eventually we get enough that it's like, well, let's see if someone wants to buy them and get a good deal and give them a good home. So that's what's going on in here, along with these little babies we raised up of the Melanotania species Cali Lumpur. All right, this is a very nice group of peacock gudgeons, one of the prettiest freshwater fish in the world, in my opinion because look at them. Look at the yellow on the fins. Look at the red on the fins, the red on the body, the steel blue iridescence on the body. Males have a big nuchal hump on their head when they're mature. You can kind of see it starting to develop on that guy back there. See how his head is more rounded. He's starting to get a, a big hump on it and a really unique, beautiful, awesome aquarium fish. I like these. I like empire gudgeons. I can't get enough of the gudgeons. I think they're amazing. And of the gudgeons, some gudgeons can be downright aggressive. These are one of the more peaceful species. Species. So you get the beauty, you get the peaceful, you get the big nuchal hump on the males, um, and not too big of a size either. Look at that guy flaring right there. Anyway, beautiful batch. They're doing fantastic. Haven't had any issues with these guys. And uh, oh, by the way, gudgeons are great for a planted tank. They're not going to eat your plants. They're not going to dig and stuff and damage things. So do really great against the green, and they contrast so nicely against plants. Anyway, there they are, beautiful peacock gudgeons. I just wanted to show you the quality of these cardinal tetras. They haven't eaten since yesterday. Look at the bellies on them. These are fantastic. They don't get healthier than this. So if you're someone who likes cardinal tetras but has struggled with them, you can't seem to get healthy ones, you can't seem to get ones that will live for you, I can almost guarantee these will work for you. I, I get very few losses with cardinal tetras. So we have a good supplier, we know how to land them, we know how to quarantine them, we know how to get them healthy. So if you're someone that wants them but has given up, I would encourage you to try one last time. We 100% guarantee that they'll do well for you. So there's no financial risk and the feedback has been amazing. We, we just, they do very well for our customers. So I just want to say that because I know a lot of people like this fish and I know a lot of the fish in the supply chain are weak and don't do well and don't live very long. So just want to tell you that in case you really like it, but gave up, I, I think it's worth one more shot and I think we'll do right by you. All right. These are some true Siamese algae eaters. You have to be a little careful when you buy algae eaters. Often you'll get flying foxes. Often you'll get Chinese algae eaters. You'll get fish that are called algae 
algae eaters that don't actually eat algae at all, or at least don't eat much algae when they get bigger and can get very aggressive. So um, these are the true ones, true Siamese algae eaters. They'll do a good job on your algae and they do get decent size, but they don't turn into aggressive punks like Chinese algae eaters. Love Chinese algae eaters, but they can be a real problem in a community aquarium because they have a, a lot of aggressive behavior. Anyway, these guys are about an inch and a quarter, smallest one, just over an inch, biggest one inch and a half. So call it an inch and a quarter, give or take a bit. And as you can see, they're fat and sassy. And that's probably because they have all this algae. This is all hair algae in this tank. There used to be a lot more of it. They've eaten about half of it over the last couple of weeks. So they're really doing a number on that uh, big clump of algae in there. Anyway, true Siamese algae eaters, young, hungry, and in good shape. Nice group of Romino's rasboras. Not fully colored in yet. That's to be expected though. They haven't been here all that long. But look at the body weight on them. That's, that's the main thing. They're getting their color. You're starting to see the red nose come in. You're starting to see the blue on the body come in. They're going to be astounding though once they settle in fully. Another two weeks in here and they'll be fully settled in. Um, might take a couple weeks after they get to you for them to fully settle in and color up, but they will be worth it. Beautiful iridescent bluefish, bright orange red nose. And again, just let me pan across here so you can see the, the health of these guys. It's very common to get Romino's rasboras in super emaciated. It's one of the fish that a lot of people have problems with. It's not the fish's fault. They're a nice hearty fish. It's the supply chain's fault. So you have to just find the right supplier that knows how to treat them with tender loving care and uh, they'll come in in good shape. And we've we found that person. We found two suppliers that do a really good job with these. And you can tell just looking at them. Oh, I love a tank full of fat and sassy healthy fish. Anyways, we're going to go, uh, yeah, we'll move on. This here is my favorite platy of all time. The reason is the first time I ever saw these guys, I was walking across a wholesaler's uh, aisle and something in the distance caught my eye. And it was these. They literally glowed from across the facility. They're so bright. This is the neon yellow calico platy, my all-time favorite platy, just because of that experience. I'll never forget that moment when I discovered this fish, saw it for the first time. It was like, I don't know, it's like a beacon saying, hey, Dan, <laughs> you finally found your perfect platy. So they're not like a super expensive show fish or anything like that. They're just super bright and happy. And I love them. Neon yellow calico platies, not a single death and doing fantastic. I think we've got a good mix. Let's see males and females in there. So um, yeah, it seems like it seems like kind of the perfect batch. Anyways, my favorite platy ever. I think just looking at them will tell you why. I look how bright that is. Look how happy. You can't look at this tank and not be happy. How, how is this not like like a whole bunch of sunshine in an aquarium. So anyways, love these fish. Okay, next up is the blue coral uh, calico platy. We had one DOA, but the batch has been good. Out of this many fish, one DOA. The, I mean, this supplier does a good job. They, they pack carefully. They do a good job. So every now and then there's an issue like that. But in general, these are rock solid fish. One of the prettiest platies out there. And for, uh, we have a, uh, a customer named uh, Spinster Sister who's been waiting on these for some females because I think she has all males. If you look at these, I'm happy to say we've got a lot of females. So that should make you happy. And look at this batch. Just... <laughs> I love my job. Like there are definitely times when a group of fish doesn't do well and that's a huge bummer. But there's also times like this when I get to just stand here, hold a camera and watch a group of some of the most gorgeous animals in the world chow down on some algae wafers. That's just fun. And by the way, these algae wafers and the Hikari Massivore Delight pellets that we're also feeding in this video are available down at our Amazon link. So if you, if you want to give us a little kickback, um, if you go down into the description, click that Amazon link and order stuff there, that'll help us out a bit. We have a little affiliate link there. Get a couple shekels. Anyway, there they are. Blue coral calico platies, including some females for spinster sister. All right, here is a group of an awesome placostomus that you might not know. You don't see these often. They used to be very common, but then you didn't ever see them again. So it's been years since, since I've seen these. These are LDA 25s, the Pitbull Pleco. They're a miniature Pleco. They're only gonna get, oh, two, two and a half inches. An absolute giant would be three inches. Small little dwarf Loricaridae. And what they look like is they look like a Pleco and an Autosynclus and a Corydora had a wild night. And then this is the result. They don't act like a Pleco, they're, they're gregarious. These guys like to be in groups like Cory's. 
They like to live together in a big group. They do suck on algae and stuff like plecos. They have the dentition of that. And then they have kind of like a long autosynclus type body. So small fish, very friendly, very gregarious, very peaceful. So that's a plus. That's different than a lot of your hypen sisters that'll beat each other up. And uh, just a, a delightful twist on a pleco type Loricaridae fish. Uh, the genus is Parautosynclus, but uh, the common name is Pitbull pleco. And I think they're just so cool because of this grouping behavior they have. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on this tour of some Dan's Fish Fish. Please keep your arms and legs inside the vehicle until it comes to a complete stop. See you next time. Hey everyone, it's Dan. If you want to learn more about aquarium fish, we do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Dan's Fish YouTube channel. If you're in the market for aquarium fish, check us out at dancefish.com. We ship to the U.S. and parts of Canada. And if you want something fishy to wear, we've got merch. Till next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.